um, excellencies, uh, distinguished representatives, esteemed guests, all participants, welcome to this roundtable on voluntary subnational reviews and peer learning to bolster local action. Local action is the core focus of this session. As we stand only eight years away from the 2030 timeline for the SDGs, we know that we lag behind on a number of targets, despite progress being made with some targets. Accelerating progress calls for effective localization of the SDGs at the lowest levels of government and society. The realization of both agendas 2030 and 2063 rests on the implementation at the local scale and the role of subnational governments. We do know that local and regional governments are closest to the people and they are often at the front line of implementing the SDGs. In this session, we will explore the role and potential of voluntary subnational reviews of the SDGs and Agenda 2063 and local action more broadly. We have here with us a very distinguished panel to share with us their reflections and experiences. Some of our panelists are here in person. You're very welcome. Some of our panelists are online. We have three other panelists online. So in the interest of moving forward quickly, I will not say more. We will move straight to uh, hearing uh, about the experiences and lessons from the panelists. Let me start with the uh, Honorable Minister of Local Government, Public Works and National Housing of Zimbabwe, Honorable July Moyo, you are welcome. Honorable Minister, you are responsible for local governments in Zimbabwe, including 1,958 wards, falling under 60 districts across 10 provinces in your country. In your view, what is the role and importance of voluntary local reviews and more broadly local governments and local action in accelerating the SDGs and Agenda 2063? Can you share with us specific actions being taken in your country to strengthen local action for development? Honorable Minister, you have five minutes. Thank you very much, uh, Moderator Ed Edlam, and all distinguished uh, honorable ministers and uh, attendees of this conference. I want to uh, thank the United Nations, especially ECA, for initiating these uh, uh, voluntary local reviews to complement national voluntary uh, reviews. It is important, as you have indicated, that uh, all of us, if we are going to service our people at the local level, and uh, the territory at the local level is where everything occurs, all service delivery, all the SDGs, if they are going to find manifestation, if they are going to, impl to be implemented with people-centered policies, we have to look at the lowest levels of our structures, and in Zimbabwe, uh, we have, uh, the country is divided into provinces, 10, as you have said. We have uh, 92 local authorities, urban, which are 32, and rural, which are 60. All those are divided into wards, and the wards are 1,958. And it is in the territory of those wards where you find all the activities that are needed to be reviewed, whether from a national point of view or from a local point of view. And the advantage of doing it at a local level is because you can capture everything. In our constitution, we have isolated certain uh, service deliver, uh, delivery uh, facilities in education, in health, in uh, water and sanitation, in uh, roads, in social amenities, as well as in electricity. Those six are at the core of service delivery. But if you disaggregate them, you will see that the impact on gender issues, the impact on the youth, the impact on almost all the 17 SDG 
deliverables. And we think that if we can capture them at the local level and we can measure them at the local level in the way that we have been doing at the national level, we will be more accurate and uh, be able to plan better. So voluntary local reviews that we have done in Zimbabwe at present have shown us that we can actually contribute to the national uh, voluntary uh, reviews which uh, we have just delivered the second uh, national one uh, to the UN system and we think that uh, in going forward as we bring more local authorities to do their local voluntary reviews we will enrich uh, whatever we will be uh, delivering at the national level. So voluntary, national, uh, voluntary local reviews in our case are uh, an impetus for us to do better. It's an impetus for us to to say, let's save our people who are in these communities. Below these wards are communities in the case of Zimbabwe. These are the communities that uh, either are suffering from uh, poverty, these are the communities that we can measure whether they are being left behind. These are the communities which, in those words, we can find out whether they are making any progress. And we can start to know the disparities between communities, between wards, and between local authorities, and between districts and provinces. Starting from the grassroots, we think we can do better. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for your intervention, uh, Honorable Minister, and for those insights. I think very strongly putting out the message that local action impacts all 17 SDGs. And voluntary local reviews served as an impetus in your case to do better, to leave no one behind, to leave no place behind. So thank you for those uh, key messages. I would now want to move to our next uh, panelist who is joining us online. I hope he has joined us, uh, tech team. Uh, this is uh, Jean-Pierre Alongambassi, the Secretary General of the United Cities and Local Governments of Africa. Mr. Ambassi, welcome. UCLG Africa is the umbrella organization and united voice and representative of local governments in Africa. It targets 40 national associations of local governments in Africa, 2,000 cities representing as much as 350 million citizens in Africa. So there you have the power of uh, organization of local governments. And so the importance and need of local action for achieving the SDGs and Agenda 2063 has been acknowledged repeatedly, Mr. Mbassi. In your view, have we sufficiently localized the SDGs and Agenda 2063 in Africa? Are we there? Why not? What can we do to realize this? You have five minutes. Well, in my view, most of the SDGs and the Agenda 2063 objectives are among the mandates of subnational and local governments. So for me, there is no really no need to localize them. And instead, there is a need for the over levels of public governance, the national level, the regional level, and the global level, to have a better understanding and knowledge of what is done at the territorial level pertaining to the SDGs and the Agenda 2063, so that it is properly incorporated in the reporting on the performances of the country on the implementation of these, these agendas. Our plea is that all national and global policies have to have a, a territorial dimension so that they become real and easily monitored improving transparency and accountability. What is required for us is to align the measurement, reporting, and verification systems on the SDGs and Agenda 2063 targets at all levels, from the local to the global, through the national and the regional levels. 
this is where uh, we think that the VLA guidelines have been very instrumental to provide this alignment. And we wish to acknowledge this remarkable release of DCA, UN Habitat, and UCAD Africa that have shown to be extremely useful for UCAD Africa members. So I think it is important that we reflect better on the way to align our reporting system so that we feed into the uh, uh, national voluntary reviews and to the reporting at the high level political forum at the UN. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Mbassi. Again, I think uh, conveying to us some really important messages, uh, telling us and saying to us that there's no need to localize because it's actually happening at the local level. Local action is where the SDGs are being implemented. And perhaps what we need is for different levels of government and decision making and stakeholders to better appreciate and integrate local action and local governments into SDG and Agenda 2063 processes. You're making a strong call to align measurement, reporting, and verification of the SDGs and Agenda 20, 2063, again, at all levels, so that the local feeds into the national and the national feeds into the global. Thank you for those insights, um, Mr. Mbassi. Let me now call on our uh, next uh, panelist, who is Ms. Uh, Monica Glinsler, who is the Director of International Relations at the Department of Human Settlements of South Africa, Monica is joining us virtually. Monica, you are welcome. You are, you are at the De Department of Human Settlements, South Africa, whose mission, whose stated mission is to facilitate the creation of sustainable human settlements and improved quality of household life. Really core to the SDGs. What role do you see for voluntary local reviews and subnational action? in accelerating progress towards sustainable human settlements, improved quality of household life. You have the floor, five minutes. Thank you, Madam Moderator, Honorable Ministers. Um, it is a real honor for me to be on this panel this morning um, and to participate in what I believe to be an extremely important debate. Um, if we look at the sustainable development agenda, I think I'm not the first person to observe that it is a whole of government, whole of society agenda. And so local level government is a key partner in the implementation of that agenda. And, and so we welcome uh, the development of the guidelines and this push towards ensuring um, that more African uh, cities and local authorities uh, participate in the sustainable development agenda. And the reason that I think that that is so important is that it is an opportunity to enable dialogue between a wide variety of actors at the national level, various government departments are responsible for implementing the goals and are collaborating with one another in order to do so. At the subnational level, at the provincial in the South African case and, uh, and at the local government level, um, the whole of that, that government system is also um, instructed to, to participate in the sustainable development agenda. And it is an opportunity through dialogue to foster partnerships and collaboration um, on implementing this crucial um, agenda going forward. Um, so if we, if we think of it as a, as a way of creating more awareness, um, of aligning plans between the national, the provincial and the local level of government, um, a, aligning budgets, prioritizing according to a shared vision of sustainable development um, and prioritizing implementation of our infrastructure and uh, basic services plans in a way that promotes sustainable development agenda. I think we will be able to take this agenda to a heightened level of implementation. 
it's been also been said uh, by the Honourable Minister and uh, by the uh, President of UCLGA that um, the local level is where it all happens. We talk about placemaking. Um, and, and, and just to explain what that means is that in a human settlement, in a ward, as the Minister of Zimbabwe called it, all aspects of the sustainable development gen agenda are happening. Where you live impacts on how you are educated, what access to health you have, what access to water you have, what your environment is, um, how safe you are uh, in terms of protecting yourself and your family from disaster, um, what is the level of air, um, clean air that you are breathing. All of that is affected by where, where you live. So I think that it, it goes without saying that taking local level action seriously is an imperative for us to achieve not only this global agenda, but also our agenda 2063 in Africa. And um, I think that if we can transform our cities, if we can transform our towns, if we can transform our villages, if we can transform our rural areas, then we will have achieved what we need to achieve, both in terms of spatial development and structural development to tick all of the goals. Every single one of the goals can be ticked by that type of intervention in terms of urban management and urban uh, development. So I hope that uh, I have not gone over time, but I really needed to underline that point that uh, uh, we need to accelerate local level action. Thank you. Thank you so much for that, um, Monica, and you have not gone over time. I have a very good panel today, so I'm happy about that. But uh, really uh, highlighting some, some key core messages, perhaps reiterating what some of the other panelists also shared with us, but this whole concept of whole of government, whole of society, and how the local level and local governments are fundamental to realizing a whole of government, whole of society approach in implementing the SDGs. And reiterating once more that it is at the local level where the SDGs happen or do not happen for that matter. And finally, um, emphasizing that where, when we transform settlements, when we transform localities of any size for that matter, we transform societies. And therein we also accelerate uh, progress with the SDGs and Agenda 2063. So thank you so much for that, um, Monica. Our next uh, distinguished uh, panelist is um, His Worship Talib Ahmed Ben Souda, who is the Lord Mayor of Kanifing Municipality in the Gambia. I had the honor of having a discussion with him this morning, really incredible innovations happening there. Mayor Ben Souda, Kanifing is one of the eight local government areas in the Gambia. The municipality has the largest population of any of the administrative districts in the Gambia. And in fact, it is the economic hub of the Gambia. Your municipality, and in your experience, what are some of the actions you are taking to actually implement the SDGs in a very concrete way? Could you share some insights with us? Uh, in the meantime, we'll uh, also be playing a short video, tech team. Do we have the video, perhaps? Uh, yes. This morning, over 400 tons of waste will be collected from 10,000 households in Kanifing Municipality. This involves 23 waste trucks and over 400 cleaning staff. To make sure the municipality you wake up from is cleaner and healthier. It is a better day to live and work in the Carnifing municipality. Please go ahead. All right. Thank you so much. <clears throat> Thank you, Edlam, uh, honorable distinguished panelists. Uh, thank you to the UN and ECA for setting up this very in, uh, important forum. Uh, as you've seen, uh, I'm Mayor Ben Suda from the Kanifing Municipality from the smiling coast of Africa, the Gambia. And uh, we've come to join this very important forum 
to discuss the role of local governments as far as the SDGs are concerned, and of course the voluntary local reviews and national reviews. Uh, I'm very glad uh, uh, the Honorable Minister mentioned the role of councils and local government because we believe councils are best positioned to deliver on the SDGs. And uh, I, I bet if you check uh, countries that are lagging behind in the SDGs uh, versus countries that are decentralized, I'm sure you'll see a very strong correlation. Countries that have decided to devolve power to councils and decentralize their governments, enabling councils to deliver services, I bet are further, down, are further uh, ahead in terms of delivery of the SDGs. Uh, what is happening mostly in African countries is power is centralized and councils are unable to deliver services. The constitution still centralizes power uh, with the president and the cabinet. So in terms of delivery of services, where the SDGs are at the local level, it has become very difficult. For example, this uh, project we have, which is the waste management in our municipality. Before we came into office in 2018, there was no waste management capacity within the municipality of Kanifeng. There was no grants coming or subventions from the central government. So we had to leverage private sector capital with a public-private partnership to bring about waste collection services in the municipality. In two months' time, we will fully own this fleet, and it just shows you the power of councils. Recently, there was a mayor in Colombia who was tied to a tree and beaten for failing on his campaign promises. This can certainly never happen to a president or a member of cabinet because councils are exposed to the people. It may take you six months, if you're lucky, to meet a head of state as an ordinary citizen, but it can take you one minute to meet your mayor or your local council member. So to implement SDGs, governments have to leverage on subnational governments who are closest to the people and better positioned to deliver on them. I think I'll rest my case. Thank you for that powerful intervention. And I think really concrete, coming to us from a municipality, from a mayor who's managing a municipality and a locality, and on a day-to-day -day basis, implementing the SDGs. We saw a very real example of waste management, which we can connect to almost all the SDGs. Think of health. Think of other uh, targets within the SDGs and how waste management is fundamental for that. So this is what we mean by local action having a transversal impact across the SDGs. So thank you very much uh, for highlighting that. And I think really making clear how accountability in its truest sense happens at the local level. You can go and knock on the door of your mayor or your, or your um, local government, but other spheres of government may not be as close uh, to the uh, communities and, and, uh, and uh, individuals. So uh, I would now move on to our next um, panelist, who is Mr. Festus Hangula. He is a representative of young people on this panel, but also a representative of the National Secretariat of the African Peer Review Mechanism. You are welcome. Mr. Hangula, you are with the African Peer Review Mechanism Secretariat in Namibia. And when we presented the voluntary local reviews at this forum in 2020, there was a very strong call made to facilitate peer-to-peer -peer engagement mechanisms at the subnational level. So my question to you is based on your experience on national peer-to-peer -peer review processes, what would be the requirements for an effective peer-to-peer -peer review mechanism between subnational authorities in Africa? Um, thank you very much, um, Eldem, Your Excellencies, distinguished fellow panelists, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Um, I feel honored to be part of this high-level panel on voluntary subnational reviews and peer review to uh, bolster local action. Um, uh, the, the, the worship, uh, his worship, the mayor, actually made my presentation very easier today because I'm going to um, actually give uh, a scenario on how this peer-to-peer -peer review works. 
So um, at, at first, let me start to say that the Agenda 2030, as well as complemented by the Agenda 2063, um, reflects the voice of millions of people across the world, as well as on the African continent, to inform government leaders on uh, the world we want. So this speaks to the slogan of no one should be left behind, as well as Africa we want. Um, at the African peer review mechanism, which was obviously uh, an organ of the African Union, we strive to encourage the adoptions of policies, standards, values that leads to best practice. And I mean best practice, this is what peer, peer review is all about, it's quality assurance. Um, I also would like to, to, um, to, to address your question, Eldam. Uh, basically, le let me give you a scenario to say you are conducting, let's assume we are conducting a peer review between two towns, town A and town B. Um, obviously, the first thing that you need to do is you have to have the same standards as well as, um, the same standards as well as, um, you have to have the same standards and, um, oh, I forgot, okay. Um, the, you have to have the same standards and the questionnaire because the questionnaire is what guides you to peer review. So. Uh, clearly, the purpose of any peer review is to actually identify governance weaknesses as well as strength and to recommend the best um, way forward then. So what you do also, secondly, what you need for this is basically you need, um, to, you need to develop these two towns by developing what you call a national plan of action. A national plan of action is your recommendation that contains within the review. So what you have done, whether the, 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 the two towns do not have the same financial and human resources capacities, the standards should be the same. And um, we were just given now an example of waste, manage, uh, waste management from the, the, the city in uh, the Gambia. So if now the, the, the waste management is a uh, waste is eliminated and obviously improved, town B, whereas town B will benefit. So it's a mutual benefit because this is what we're doing, best practices, sharing your best practices with your peers. Um, so basically what we also do at the APRM is um, uh, uh, we have two reports or we have two reviews that we do. The country review report, basically where a country is identified the governance challenges based on four thematic areas. The four thematic areas are your govern, uh, political, uh, democracy and political governance, you have uh, corporate governance, socioeconomic development, economic governance and management. So we also have what we call the targeted review. Targeted review is our innovative ways of identifying specific governance issues that you then share with your, peer, with your peers. Uh, in our case in Namibia, we did a targeted review on youth unemployment, uh, where obviously we, the, the, we undertook the study, the findings were made, recommendations were made, we developed what we call the National Plan of Action, these are now recommendations, we are mainstreaming in, uh, it into our national development plans, as well as um, championing it on, on the African continent with our peers. So those are one of the reviews that we do, and really in terms of uh, local authorities, uh, towns, and sub-national level, I think I encourage as well as um, the, the APRM to collaborate with ECA in, in, in strengthening these reviews on the African continent. I thank you. Uh, thank you so much. As, as, as the VLR movement grows, as we have a growing demand from subnational authorities to conduct VLRs, this becomes the peer-to-peer -peer review and exchange um, and um, learning, I suppose, becomes much more important. So your reflections on what it takes, what kind of process may be required, and the value really of peer-to-peer -peer, uh, exchange uh, is, is well appreciated. So thank you so much for that. Um, before I open the floor to the audience, I wonder if any of the panelists would like to react to what another panelist has said. If not, we open it to the floor. Um, okay, 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 great. So, uh, dear participants, we have a fantastic panel who have shared with us uh, their reflections. You have representatives of different tiers of government, uh, different stakeholders with us. So I'm opening the floor now for your questions and your comments. Um, I am having an indication. Is that a question? Yes? yes. Okay, yes, okay. So I see um, 
three already. Can the support team please? Yes, there's one over there. Yes, the gentleman in the middle. Yes, South Sudan. And one over here. And four. So I've seen four. Let's start with those, and then we'll see if we can take more. So right at the back, please be as brief as possible. Our panelists have been extremely good in keeping brief, so I expect the same from participants. Very brief, please. Thank, thank, thank you very much, uh, Madam Moderator, for the uh, excellent moderation, and also for the speakers. I just wanted to start by um, saying that um, when you talk SDGs, you should think youth, women, and local governments, because they are the key players and the most important uh, stakeholders. So my question uh, is going uh, basically to uh, Taliban Suda and also the other panelists. How do we ensure that the implementation at the local level is locally owned and locally led? For example, when you take this huge document down to the local level, how do we put it in indigenous languages? How do we incorporate our culture into it and make sure it reflects our future, that is number one. Then number two, uh, the question goes to uh, the other panelists, how do we harmonize the policies at the local government level with the policies at the national level in collaboration with the SDGs? So these are my questions. Thank you very much. Thank you. Did you introduce yourself, please, kindly? And could all speakers introduce themselves? I'm, I'm Ibrahim Sise Shalom from, uh, from Africa. Okay, thank you. And then right here in the middle, yes, please, South Sudan, go ahead. Thank you very much. Um, Madam Speaker, Honorable Ministers, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. My name is Garang Majak from South Sudan. I represent private sector, and I would like to share my experience with the challenges that are facing sustainable development goals uh, in Africa and also in South Sudan. Uh, my first question goes to Madam Director General or Director of Human Settlement or Resettlement in South Africa. Um, I know for sure what we are trying to achieve is to provide service, basic services or basic need to all citizens in the continent of Africa. Where I come from, we have got challenges of accessibility. It is very difficult to assess local people in the rural areas. People are migrating from the rural areas to urban areas, searching for basic services. I would like to give a typical example of where we are today. We came to Kigali because there are facilities to facilitate, to facilitate this meeting. Okay. Then we'll continue in the next five years, for example. My question to Madam Director in South Africa is that in an Africa setup where communities are scattered in the rural areas, you find that one household is like one kilometer apart from the other. How do you manage to provide services in terms of electricity, in terms of clean drinking water, in terms of education, and in terms of even farming, that is my question to her. My question to the panelists as a whole is that I know for sure we have been trying to achieve sustainable development goals. But I think it is high time for us to raise strategize and come up with the strategies that will achieve the objective and the vision of Africa 2063. I propose that let us encourage the leadership of the youth, the young people, and instead of using them as people who are in the front line collecting data, let us also give them leadership role to be able to lead this movement. Let us give them because we know for sure Without leadership, it is very difficult to achieve the sustainable development goal. Therefore, the challenges that are being faced by African countries that we are not able to coordinate, we are not able to give incentive, I think, to me, let us support the youth, let us give them leadership. And finally, let us also encourage the private sector 
and commercialize this activity. For example, if we are to invest... Okay. If you could kindly conclude. Okay, uh, thank you, Madam Speaker. If we are to invest in sustainable development goals by trying to mobilize resources and provide budget, we must be able to produce, uh, let's say, goods and services in our economy without adding value addition in our gross domestic product of Africa. We are recycling the same resources and we are not adding more. Let us give young people leadership to produce more so that we are able to have finances to finance sustainable development goal. Thank you very much. Thank you for that. We'll take one more question from, from, from this side. And Madam over there, so here first and over there I see, uh, yes. Okay, so we'll, we'll take the whole round of questions. Just back there first. Thank you. Thank you to the panelists and everyone that presented. Just one quick question. I would like to understand and learn from the panelists how the alignment between the VLR um, uh, and VNR and alignment are actually done. The reason why I ask is because I'd like to understand in terms of cost implication. Um, I work with the UN in a small country, Guinea-Bissau, and to do the three of them, they're really expensive. So it would be good to know how other countries have done it and how they've sequenced them. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, can we go to that side, please? Just back there, I see. Yes. Thank you very much, moderator. And uh, thank you. Um, I want to say a big thank you to the panel that talked about the waste management. Really, it's a big problem in Africa countries. And uh, congratulations to all Ugandans and the president. For, since I arrived, I've seen what you guys have done so much. And I wish that this should be conducted in most African countries because waste man management in my country is a really big problem. The government spends so much trying to work on this waste management. The, pub, uh, the private people are also coming in to work on this, the same waste problem. I want to find out, is there, a, uh, is there a way that we should come out with a policy from this group, from this forum, that will go around to each country that will help us to do, do, have an, a sort of education in all urban centers and the local area to, to find a way where we can reduce our rubbish, find a way where we can stop the pollutions, find a way where we can make sure that plastic rubbers don't pollute our water and other areas so that we can be, we'll be able to achieve the SDG on health. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, yes, I think, Madam, just right here, over there. Um, I can't see the country, but the, 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 the Madam in white, in white, just next to the camera person. We'll take one more and then we'll bring it back. Merci. Uh, merci, Madame la Modératrice, et uh, félicitations à tous les uh, présentateurs. Je voulais juste poser une question uh, aux représentants du MAEP uh, de la Namibie, uh, parce qu'il a parlé de, 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 des examens, uh, des examens qui sont qui sont uh, qui sont effectués au niveau national et, et, et des examens ciblés. Et ils ont fait un examen euh, euh, sur l'emploi des jeunes. Et la question que je voulais poser, c'est euh, qui effectue ces examens Parce que si, on, euh, si je prends le cas, cas du Sénégal, euh, nous avons au niveau national euh, une commission nationale euh, de bonne gouvernance qui est un dé démembrement du, du MAEP. Donc, et c'est cette commission-là qui se charge d'étudier de, de, de tous, tous les aspects liés à, à l'évaluation, aux examens euh, euh, des pays ou aux examens euh, par les pairs. Donc, je voulais savoir qui effectue les examens euh, qui sont faits euh, au niveau des, des villes ou des communes euh, dont, il, euh, dont il a parlé. Merci beaucoup. Thank you. Um, I, I think, sir... Just right here in the front, please. 
Can we have a mic over here? Merci, madame, de m'avoir donné la parole. Euh, C'est juste pour partager l'expérience de la République centrafricaine concernant le ZOD4, spécifiquement dans la protection de l'espace d'apprentissage. Euh, ce que nous vivons, c'est l'expérience amère, c'est une expérience amère qui est, qui est devenue récurrente. Et dès que le, le groupe armé non conventionnel investissent une localité, leur point d'atterrissage, c'est l'école. Et ensuite, c'est les dégâts. Alors, on a beau euh, adopter des textes réglementaires, internes, et même supranational au niveau de l'Assemblée, aidé, bien entendu, par les, les Nations Unies. Mais ça s'arrête seulement au niveau de des textes. Le rapport de force fait que c'est toujours les groupes armés qui ont le dessus. Alors, au niveau interne, nous avons organisé les structures associatives, les APE, les, les enseignants, y compris les élèves, et qui sont organisés euh, en, groupe, en groupement de veille. Mais uniquement, et là encore, il y a des limites, ça s'arrête seulement au niveau de la sensibilisation de, de communication, pas plus. Alors, c'est pourquoi je voudrais partager, profiter de ce sérum-là pour partager cette préoccupation afin de bénéficier peut-être des enfants des autres pays. Thank you. Final question here, very briefly. Uh, merci, madame la facilitatrice, pour la question donnée. Euh, je suis un gominant du ministère de l'économie, de la planification et du développement du Tchad. Euh, je suis très, je suis avec beaucoup d'intérêt les panélistes et je suis particulièrement intéressé par la localisation des ODD. En parlant de la localisation des ODD, le Tchad, pendant les deux expériences des VNR, a sérieusement penché sur cette question, mais pour des raisons de ressources suffisantes, euh, nous avons opté beaucoup plus pendant le processus d'impliquer toutes les parties prenantes au niveau national et pendant le processus, nous allons au niveau local donner l'information, disséminer les, différentes, euh, les différents rapports que nous avons fournis au niveau national et nous trouvons que peut-être cela n'est pas assez efficace du moment où c'est l'inclusion et l'efficacité qui devraient prévaloir parce que dans un pays comme le nôtre où la population est à majorité rurale, c'est là où résident les vrais problèmes et si on voudrait vraiment toucher les préoccupations de la population, il faudrait redescendre à la base pour récolter beaucoup plus d'informations qui nous permet vraiment de toucher les réalités des gens. Malheureusement, les ressources faisant défaut nous n'avons pas opté pour euh, cette approche. Alors, en suivant les panélistes, c'est comme si l'efficacité de cette approche est plus ou moins euh, mitigée. Je voudrais, nous, euh, comme nous sommes toujours dans le processus, peut-être que dans le troisième processus des VNR, nous allons envisager cette approche. Mais nous voulons que les panélistes nous disent comment le faire dans, un contexte, dans le contexte d'un pays où les ressources sont limitées et un pays très vaste où pour toucher la totalité de la population, il faudrait suffisamment de, 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 de ressources. Comment le faire Voilà la question que je voudrais poser aux panélistes. Merci. Uh, thank you so much. A lot of questions. We'll come back to you. We'll have another round. Before I give it back to the panelists to take some of those questions, I would like to invite uh, one of the panelists, uh, actually, who is also here with us virtually, to intervene before we come back to the questions. And in a sense, representing a global agenda and a global organization, uh, it's, it's, it's actually quite relevant to have uh, this panelist speak at this point in time. So I'm quickly inviting for a five-minute intervention Mr. Raftutz, who is the director of the Global Solutions Division at the United Nations 
Human Settlements Program. This is the United Nations entity that uh, is uh, mandated to work on uh, the Human Settlements Agenda, which we are discussing here today. Mr. Uh, Raf Tutz, welcome. Thank you for joining us now. We know that Africa has the fastest urban growth rate in the world. We also know that 580 million Africans already live in urban areas of different sizes. This year is a momentous one. The United Nations General Assembly is convening in April to discuss the question of sustainable urbanization. Clearly, this is a testimony to the importance of the agenda and to all of us and to the urban future and present that we live in. So, um, Mr. Tutz, how is this UNGA meeting an opportunity to accelerate the SDGs and Agenda 2063, including through localization? Can you share your thoughts with us? Thank you, moderator. Thanks, um, Ed Lam, uh, for this question. I'm very happy to be here. Uh, with you on the panel. And I think the, the questions around urbanization, I think are very relevant. Also uh, judging from the questions that are coming uh, from the floor uh, during the session here. Uh, and also really congratulations to ECA for taking the initiative to, to bring this topic um, of local reporting so central in the, in the regional debate uh, on sustainable development. This is really much appreciated. Just a few words on this urbanization trends that you mentioned. Uh, indeed, in Africa, uh, urban growth is, is very rapid currently at 3.7%. This is almost unmanageable. Uh, to, to manage a growth of 3.7% is, is, is very, very difficult with, even with, with, um, with strong capacity and systems and, and resources. And just to put that in, into context, the, um, African population, urban population was only 27 million in 1915 and has now grown to 580 million. So that's a 2000% increase throughout this period. And now we are adding every year more than 20 million urban dwellers um, in Africa. So the original population in 1950, urban population is now added every year uh, to the our African urban population. That's the, the reality we are facing. And this is not only happening uh, as in, in cities like Johannesburg or in Kinshasa or Nairobi, but in also predominantly in intermediary cities, which will play a very key role in the further uh, transition towards an urban or predominantly urban Africa. And also those um, intermediary cities will play a key role in the recovery uh, of the pandemic and making the bridge obviously between rural areas and uh, large cities and strengthening urban rural linkages. So in this context, the, we have talked about agenda uh, 2063, the 2030 sustainable development agenda, and also we need to highlight the new urban agenda and its perspective because it is a complementary instrument that provides an action-oriented framework to redesign and redevelop um, African urban spaces. It, it provides, it was uh, adopted in 2016. It's now um, six years uh, in, it, in its existence and provides a number of recommendations on how to develop national urban policy, uh, strengthen uh, urban and territorial planning systems, municipal finance, and many other recommendations which member states have committed themselves to. Now, six years down the line, and now coming back to your question about this high-level meeting, uh, the, the member states of the United Nations have agreed to meet on the 28th of April this year, next month, in New York to review the progress uh, of this, this agenda over the past six years. And um, Secretary General has um, produced a report looking at the progress and indeed many things are happening in terms of um, policy making, planning, capacity development and financing, um, but also not sufficient. It's definitely not sufficient uh, and we are not on track. To use the new urban agenda as, an, as, a, as a mechanism to stimulate rapid, more rapid acceleration of the SDGs and 
uh, Agenda 2063. So if we don't do this, then we miss an opportunity to address inequality, um, to achieve balanced prosperity and to uh, accelerate climate action uh, through, through city actions and to promote social cohesion. Because these are the outcomes of the new urban agenda if applied um, uh, through, uh, through the Quito uh, Declaration. So what has happened? In this, in this report of the Secretary General, it is based on 25 reports of member states, including seven from Africa, including Malawi, Senegal, Botswana, Tunisia, Algeria, Egypt, and Kenya. So in a way, only a small uh, portion of the member states has submitted national reports and much more awareness is needed um, at the national level uh, to, to, to reflect and to report back on this agenda and to explain to uh, peer governments what has happened. And in this regard, and this is coming to the second part of your question, the, the VLRs, the voluntary local reviews, come in very handy uh, to stimulate also further implementation of this agenda because they're based on common principles. First, the new urban agenda in, identifies multi-level governance as a critical means of implementation. And we have seen that also the VLRs are contributing to revamping this kind of multi-level dialogues between national governments uh, and, and, and local and sub-national governments. And also secondly, the new urban agenda commits to inclusion, to inclusive platforms for participation of local communities in planning and decision makings. And actually the VLRs are also promoting the same level of inclusion um, through uh, developing local reporting. So that's why it is extremely important to further stimulate the production and um, the joint development of uh, such uh, voluntary local um, review systems. And this is, I'm sure, one of the things that will be on top of the agenda during this review meeting of the new urban agenda, where Habitat and uh, ECA and the African Union and UCLG Africa have joined forces to develop a common position for Africa uh, so that Africa speaks with one voice during this global meeting and have a very strong uh, pro-local government, pro-regional government, pro-VLR um, commitments during uh, this uh, meeting next uh, month. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh really, really important uh, in the sense that the numbers you shared with us are really powerful. 20 million new urban dwellers every year, a 2,000% increase in recent times in urban population. So this is really a wave that's already with us, a wave of urbanization. How do we respond to it? How do we turn it into an asset? And what we're hearing from you is that there is the new urban agenda as a global framework, as a global guidance, and the entire United Nations General Assembly will be meeting this April to discuss this important agenda. And so what are the messages that we want to put forward as a region for that kind of a discussion uh, is, is, is my take from your intervention. So now let's go to the questions, the many questions, uh, dear panelists. So there's a lot of interest. Um, and I think what I would want to do is give you the freedom to pick the questions that you want to respond to from those that have been raised. If any have not been answered, I may come back to you. So, if I then may ask uh, Honorable uh, July Moyo, would you like to respond to some of the questions that were uh, asked? Uh, thank you very much. Unfortunately, the microphones were playing havoc with us, so I want to apologize in advance. Colleagues who spoke in French, we did not quite understand what they were saying. But let me respond to two questions. The first one, uh, on inclusion of youth and women. Uh, in Zimbabwe, we have made a conscious decision, and which is now constitutional, that uh, women will not fight men in the electoral system, uh, and uh, we have reserved one-third of the uh, seats in, a, in every local authority will be reserved for women. Because we are very conscious, most of the SDGs that we are talking about, and when we are talking about the, the local level, the women are affected 
on a day-to-day -day basis more than the men. So we want to strengthen the participation of women by them competing on electoral wards directly against men, but at the same time reserve uh, some seats so that we can achieve in an electoral system of a hybrid, uh, proportional as well as first past the post. And we think that first past the post only will not encourage uh, the women to, to win. As the youth, we have already taken a position that every council will have a junior councillors uh, that will produce junior mayors, uh, junior chairpersons of councils, and uh, this we are having a movement which almost uh, encourages youth in primary, secondary uh, schools to participate. I know at national level in parliament, we have junior parliamentarians, but we want to inculcate the participation of youth at the local level. As I left Zimbabwe, the youth in councillors were having a conference. Normally, that conference is attended uh, by the chairman of the Local Government Association of Zimbabwe, who happens to be in this room and is attended by some mayors, and I have the mayor from the second largest city who are in this room. So that we encourage. And uh, coupled with the culture, uh, decentralization, which has become now a norm in Africa. Years ago, this was thought not to be a norm. And devolution, which has also come to be a norm, where uh, power is devolved to, to communities, is devolved to, to local authorities. These local authorities in one country have different cultural uh, practices that are only uh, uh, to, uh, localized to that area. So we think that these uh, voluntary local reviews will capture all that, while the national will capture the rest. The second thing which I want to, to answer uh, or to, to give my own opinion is how do we make sure that uh, national voluntary reporting and uh, local uh, reporting, a whole of government approach uh, says those who act at national level, at provincial level, must also be strengthening the action at the local level. So we are not uh, supplanting anything, but we are saying, for instance, the Minister of Labour, who is in this room from Zimbabwe, will work with the local authorities, will work with us in the Ministry of Local Government, will work with all the ministries because they are all acting at the local level. Uh, even this COVID has taught us that the local authorities are so important in Zimbabwe because infectious diseases, for instance, are the... Uh, the actions are taken by the local authorities more than the central government ministry of, of health, and it is in law. All our actions are guided by law, and uh, the ministries must work with the local authorities in order to strengthen them because the laws are administered by ministers. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, I think powerful examples of what you're doing, actually, to bring in women and youth into leadership. And uh, an important point you raised, COVID-19 showed us once again, how important the local level, the local scale of action and local governments are as we pursue our development agenda. Can I ask you, uh, Mayor, to now reflect on some of the issues that were raised, including, for example, the private sector's role and some of the other areas that were raised, perhaps not responding to the same ones that uh, His, Minister, His Excellency responded. Thank Absolutely. you. Absolutely. First, I'd like to congratulate the Minister and the Government of Zimbabwe for their landmark legislation on women empowerment. Uh, my political party has copied the same, and in our political party constitution, we have amended to have 30% women candidates. Unfortunately, we did not win the election, so <laughs> we hope our government will follow suit. Uh, I just want to uh, answer on the question about how do we localize the SDGs and how do we ensure that they're implemented at the local level. I think uh, the minister had alluded to the same, is devolution of powers and decentralization. It's in all our local government acts, in all African governments, local government acts, but it's not practiced by many. Uh, we just saw a landmark legislation in Nigeria one week ago uh, uh, giving autonomy, both administrative and financial, to city councils and local government areas. I think we need more of this because like I've alluded to before, 
Local governments are closer to the people. Therefore, like my colleague said, if we want quality assurance, which the National Review and the Local Review is asking for, we need the best intelligence. And the best intelligence can be only gotten through the local councils. I'll give you an example. Uh, we have an issue of an urban drift in the Gambia. My municipality, which is the most urbanized, now is the most densely populated municipality in the country, if not uh, in the sub-region. We have 5,000 people per kilometer square living in the municipality. Of course, that puts a lot of pressure on infrastructure, waste management, schools, public health, all the things the SDGs are advocating for. For example, on urban transport, we do not yet have an urban bus system. So when the central government was intervening, they came up with a bus service that gives long-distance long uh, service, meaning inter-regional connectivity. But that doesn't solve the issue of urban transport. That doesn't solve the issue of expensive, inefficient transportation within the community. So this is why we are also trying to implement the first urban bus service within our municipality. So this is the difference between local government and national government implementation. That's why national governments should use local governments to implement at the local level. Because if we do that at the local level, communities' issues are solved and resolved, then collectively we can come closer to solving the issues of the SDGs. Secondly, there was a question about uh, uh, waste management. I think with our experience, uh, you need to leverage as much as you can on communities to solve the waste management issue because it is created at the community level. There's a saying in our country that spirits don't generate waste, people do. So the waste management issue is at the household level, at the community level. So there needs to be education and sensitization at that level, but also in schools. In our schools, we need to teach our children the relationship with waste and how they deal with it. So, for example, when I came into office, we saw there was a problem of public littering. So we brought about 500 litter bins around the municipality in strategic locations to make sure that people are not littering at all. And we used an innovative approach. We took some lessons from the circular economy by using waste tires, used tires that are thrown in our landfill, sewing them and stitching them together and creating uh, 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 litter bins. Now, the first time it was implemented in my city, I was driving by one, and I saw a man leaning on a waste bin, eating an orange. So I made it a point to park my car to look what he would do after he finished eating the orange. He was leaning on a waste bin, but after he finished eating the orange, he threw it in a ditch. And that was my first experience that more needs to be done, not just bringing the resources, but also bringing some level of enforcement through bylaws at the city level and also anti-littering laws at the environmental agency. But lastly, I think most importantly and what's most sustainable is we need to teach at the school level how people should deal with waste. That's my intervention. Thank you. Thank you so much. I, really interesting, again, to hear from you because you speak the reality and you speak to the issues that you're handling on a day-to-day -day basis. So thank you. And once again, for emphasizing that national, local collaboration and coordination is a win-win, really, and uh, how powerful it can be if we do it well enough. And importantly, also the role of communities themselves in addressing many of the issues that we face at the local level, uh, together with local governments, of course. Let me now uh, change track a little bit and take it to the uh, uh, panelists who are here with us online, virtually. Can I call on uh, Mr. Jean-Pierre Longbassi? Please, could you respond to some of the questions and comments that um, were raised, including, I think, very pertinent questions uh, raised by Central African Republic uh, and Chad as well, related to perhaps how do you do this in a country that's you know, covering a very large expanse of land, population is scattered, resources are limited. What does localization mean in such a context, really? And can we really achieve it? What does it take? So that may be one of the issues you address, uh, Mr. Mbassi, along with others. You have the floor for a brief uh, intervention. Over to you. Thank you very much, uh, Ed Lam. And uh, let me say from the outset that uh, all the questions raised 
the issue of recording in progress the SDGs and the agenda 2063. I think there is need to link the SDGs and agenda 2063 to peacekeeping. Like uh, our colleague from Santa Fe would say, if you are a country in war, you cannot accelerate uh, the implementation uh, of the SDGs. There is a requirement that this continent is in peace to be able to uh, uh, realize the SDGs and agenda. This was a, a, a very uh, important engagement of the African Union to stop arms and war on this continent. And he is totally right to say that as long as we have a, a population under pressure uh, because of conflict and, and armed conflict. Africa is being discussed. Um, just to also, um, in addition to add to that, is mentorship. Uh, mentorship underpins Mentorship underpins transitional leadership. We must deliberately transfer skills over to young people for taking over leadership. Then it becomes smooth and allows continuation and acceleration of programs. So I think really we need to start preparing young people for taking over. I thank you. Thank you. Short but extremely powerful. Uh, involve us from the start and we are the future and mentorship as transitional leadership. So I, I think that's, that's really, really good to hear that. Um, so we've, we've had the panel react uh, to your questions and to your comments. And I would now want to ask the panel to give us some very brief recommendations for actions. What would be your three actions in the context of this discussion that you want to uh, put forward it could be for national government, it could be for local government, other stakeholders, but the three key sort of actions, because action is what we need, that you want to put forward. And then we'll open it back to the floor very briefly for your reactions to the actions that have been proposed. So, uh, Minister Amoyo, you have the floor for uh, two to three minutes. Uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, and I think going forward, uh, the for me, the first thing is to finalize the guidelines. Uh, I was happy the Secretary General, Deputy Secretary General of the United Nations yesterday in the session that I attended, she alluded to this uh, local voluntary reporting and uh, the UN, uh, UNECA should come up and finalize that. Secondly, we think that uh, the clear finalization of that will make it link with the national uh, voluntary reporting and, uh, and give clear guidelines that uh, we can no longer just report as if there is, uh, we are reporting from the air. We now need to deepen it because devolution, decentralization is a reality and it, it answers to what we need to do. And we, the third thing is the financial mechanisms. Uh, many African countries have different financial mechanisms that make uh, the local level either become dependent on central government or they have uh, powers to raise their own funds. And uh, let's see how those funds are actually helping in uh, implementing SDGs uh, and, as we report. Because uh, central government has a duty to deliver some services through local authorities or directly. Uh, but uh, whether it's directly or through local authorities, it manifests itself in, at the local level. So to find out a mechanism of how those resources are being spent, for instance, in a local authority area, whether those resources are spent by central government or by local government is key for us to answering the questions of whether we are moving forward uh, with these uh, SDGs. So those are the three areas, the financial mechanism, the linkages for reporting, and uh, developing the guidelines. And we look to ECA and uh, the UN to develop this. Thank you. 
Thank you so much. Just a point of clarification. The guidelines are done now, finally. So let's, we can celebrate that. We have a very detailed Africa voluntary local review guideline, which can help, I'm sure, the many subnational authorities that are interested in undertaking VLRs, and also national governments, actually, that would like to promote subnational reviews. So that is ready, that is available. We are here to support you with our partners. Thank you for your three action areas. Uh, Mayor Bensouda, please. Um, so in our country, we are still undergoing our first review. However, we have uh, some suggestions to improve the process. One of them would be uh, prompt disbursement in order that the reviews can be conducted in a timely manner. The second is greater support for smaller countries and countries with resource constraints that are currently conducting the reviews. And the third one would be to ensure that the review process is light touch to ensure that we gain the benefits from the voluntary local review while maintaining maximum bandwidth for getting on with delivering the work on which we are reporting. So these are my three interventions. Thank you. My reading is that some of those recommendations may be for development partners as well Absolutely. as government. Okay, thank you. Um, Festus, your three action areas. Okay, thank you again, um, Eldam. Basically, number one, bolster stakeholders' engagement. This is everybody should be involved in the process. That's from your top leadership to the person who's sitting down there in the rural areas. It's very important. Um, civil society participation is very critical to these processes. Um, my second one will be capacity building. We have to um, capacitate civil servants to ensure effective implementation as well as monitoring and evaluation. Um, data, you have to have accurate data, readily available data, so it's important for us to strengthen our national statistics agencies. Um, and these are factors that actually fosters accountability and inclusivity. Thank you. Fantastic. Um, okay, can we go back to our virtual uh, panelists? Uh, Monica, can I come back to you for your three action areas, please? Yes, thank you so much. So I think that the first um, action is um, for us to ensure a collaborative um, working arrangement between all the national government stakeholders and the provincial and local government stakeholders, civil society organizations, academia, researchers, um, and implementing this big agenda um, as a collaborative partnership and to shy away from silo thinking and fostering knowledge sharing and best practices uh, sharing among the various stakeholders uh, within a country and across uh, borders with other countries. The second uh, action area would be to actively engage in the high level political forum as has been suggested that takes place every year in July and to make the argument that the urban and the human settlement space is a key place-making um, driver for the implementation of the sustainable development agenda. And then the third item is to take advantage of the fact that the General Assembly this year is going to have a special session on the implementation of the new urban agenda on the 28th of April and to participate as Africans very uh, actively and shaping that message of the structural transformation in Africa and the role of all levels, all spheres of government in implementing the urban agenda and the sustainable uh, development agenda. Those would be my three parting shots. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you so much. I'll move straight to uh, Jean-Pierre Longbassi. What would be your three action areas? Well, I think, it, oh, I don't know if I, it's okay. I think uh, we need to implement VLR and VSR processes and consider them that as a, an accelerator or multi-stakeholder policy dialogue at the territorial level around shared objectives with clear responsibilities. We need to institutionalize multi-level governance dialogue uh, between the national and the uh, subnational and local government on these reviews. 
But uh, this dialogue will be uh, uh, well organized, structured, if these processes of VLA and VSA are led by national association of local, go local governments, because they have the capacity to share their membership experiences, exchange good practices, and organize peer review, including in relation with the APA. The third one is to really uh, work on the financial dimension of these uh, reviews. Uh, our experience shows that uh, uh, to execute a review, we need at $15,000 per review. For uh, 2022, 22 African countries have volunteered to conduct national reviews. The uh, uh, ideal would have been that uh, uh, we conduct uh, the uh, uh, local reviews at the same time. But uh, as many people have said, uh, UCAD Africa, we supported only three countries. We, are, we need to be up to the scale. And for that, we need that uh, the budget allocated for national uh, voluntary reviews include also the expenses incurred by the uh, subnational and uh, local voluntary reviews. Thank you so much. Uh, Raf, I'm coming back to you for your three action areas as briefly as possible. Thanks, Adlam. And I'm, I'm going to put it a little bit more broadly, uh, also beyond the, the PLRs and reflecting on uh, what some of our colleagues, panelists have expressed, uh, what could accelerate implementation of the, the global agendas. So I have three proposals uh, and they're all directed to, to member states, uh, to national governments. First is to integrate housing and related basic services as um, a key element of social protection. Uh, I think there's a lot of discussion about revisiting um, social contracts, social protection. And as Monica has said, housing is the place where you live, has a huge influence on health, on your income, on your education, and on your basic services. So we need to anchor housing as a key element of social protection to achieve um, the, the global agendas. Second is um, related to the um, planetary agenda. Um, we need to strengthen the urban dimension of nationally determined contributions. Uh, that is absolutely critical to mobilize the, the power of cities in, in, um, in making sure the Paris Agreement um, can, be, can be achieved as well as also uh, related issues to um, like uh, biodiversity and as I mentioned earlier, uh, plastic pollution. So mobilizing the local voices for global environmental agendas. And finally, uh, member states, I uh, would like to urge member states to strengthen uh, institutional mechanisms to engage local and regional governments in intergovernmental and national planning processes. And this is also echoed by the Secretary General in uh, the creation of an advisory group on local and regional government to strengthen the engagement of local and regional government throughout all the operations of the United Nations. I'll leave it here. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think really uh, powerful recommendations. We don't have so much time, but I want to bring it back to you, the audience, for three critical reactions very quick no no long questions no statements there's so many people that want to speak um okay i'll, t I'll take uh, the gentleman here you need to be very brief please mali and uh yes sir okay so yes first over here one liners if possible All right, um, good um, afternoon, um, Your Excellencies, uh, all the members here. My name is Theophilus Nyoma. I'm from Namibia. I'm here with my Minister of Education, Arts and Culture, and uh, my colleagues from Namibia Festus. And um, 
and a colleague. Um, quickly, uh, the recommendations are well and fine, but I feel like um, if you go down to every country, to the person on the grassroots level, I do not think they are aware of the SDGs. And if you, to prove that, we can go back to our countries and do a small survey. Just go down in the street, go to the villages, and ask them about the SDGs. They do not know that. And I think that is where the problem comes from. Because if we foster moving forward, we only have eight years to 2030. If we go down and remobilize and uh, uh, reintroduce, so to say, these SDGs to our people down in the communities, the traditional authorities, the church leaders, the schools, these platforms, we need to reemphasize the SDGs time and again, because time is against us. Number two, if we mobilize our communities down to the uh, traditional authorities, they, and we take ownership of the SDGs, we will not need to worry about targets for 2030, because once we take ownership, it becomes a common practice that I cannot throw away paper there. It becomes common practice. So, but we, it needs to be a top-down, I mean a bottom-up approach from the village. We should start putting dustbins in our uh, villages. We should teach our kids in the rural areas how to keep our uh, environment clean, and etc., etc. We should teach our kids in the uh, rural areas how to respect women. Thank because, you. Yes. And at the end of the day, um, we are talking about urbanization. This urbanization takes place because people are moving from the rural areas to towns. If in the rural areas, I was taught, like my, my traditional practices tell me that I cannot be answered by a woman. When I come to town, I will, uh, I will uh, uh, act violently against that woman because she's answering me back. Please conclude. Yes, in conclusion, we're talking about best practices, and that's why we are here. Kigali is the cleanest city in Africa. Yes, and every uh, last Saturday of every month in Rwanda, people, they have a national cleaning campaign. Why can't we own such a best practice and do that in our respective countries? I thank you. Thank you. I'm sorry I had to cut you. You were actually very powerful in your statement. I think I, I saw there was, yes, no, Mali, uh, the representative from Mali, please, and then we'll bring it over here. That will be the final intervention. But thank you so much. Uh, thanks, Madam Medlam, for giving me the floor. Uh, je suis ambassadeur directeur Sédou Koulibaly, uh, directeur uh, de la coopération multilatérale au ministère des Affaires étrangères et de la coopération internationale. Uh, merci beaucoup. Uh, je voudrais juste faire suite à, 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 à la déclaration de M. Mbassi uh, pour reconnaître le rôle important de la paix et de la sécurité dans l'atteinte de l'agenda 2030 et de l'agenda 2063. Comme vous le savez, le Mali, nous avons produit notre premier rapport en 2018 dans un contexte de crise. Et fort malheureusement, le second rapport que nous nous sommes engagés à produire va vraiment intervenir dans un, autre, dans un contexte de crise. Et je pense que les, les hautes autorités ont conscience de cette situation ce qui fait que le gouvernement, le président de la République s'est engagé à, à mettre en œuvre des actions sociales pour d'abord améliorer un certain nombre d'indicateurs. Le président s'est engagé à vraiment réaliser des points d'eau pour qu'il connaisse vraiment la relation entre les différents indicateurs, l'eau qui peut être source de vie, qui peut améliorer la santé, qui peut faire office de vraiment améliorer l'agriculture et la nutrition. Au-delà de ça, je pense que nous voudrons ici remercier le système des Nations Unies et le PNUD pour leur contribution à l'accompagnement du gouvernement. Nous avons mené un processus d'alignement des agendas 2063 et 2030 pour faire en sorte que nous puissions avoir les liens cohérents et atteindre ces indicateurs. Je voudrais vraiment demander à ce que l'Union africaine puisse encore davantage accompagner le gouvernement du Mali dans l'atteinte de ce résultat et dans l'atteinte de la paix. Je pense que de nos jours, la situation s'améliore avec le retour des personnes déplacés internes avec l'amélioration de la situation sécuritaire. C'est cet appel que je voudrais lancer. Merci à tous et vivement l'atteinte de nos objectifs pour une Afrique Thank you. sécurisée. Merci beaucoup.